prairie rose for Emily. To make a prairie rose, it takes a clover and one bee, a bee and one clover. Revolution and reverie, which wakes, shakes, breaks, and quakes. To dream, her chance to rave, to glance, perhaps as light upon glistening dew at breaking dawn or furtively at lover and reverie alone will do if bees and waggle dance and the revolutionaries are few All right, well, so a couple of days ago, I had done uh, a reading that uh, that I introduced and and <laughs> promised would be a kind of close reading of a poem by Emily Dickinson. And of course, it, it, it wasn't really a, a very close reading at all, but it was a frame. It was a contextual frame under which, you know, um, one um, arguably, right, could... Uh, could uh, conceive of uh, the work and and production of um, a number of Emily Dickinson's poems as uh, an expression of visionary experience or what I referred to as mystical experience and um, and this lens of, uh, of understanding uh, Dickinson as as visionary or mystic, um, doesn't resolve all of the complexities and difficulties and paradoxes and contradictions of, uh, of her poetry, but uh, but I suggest it perhaps uh, gives rise to a, a, a different set of figural figural values, um, you know, through which um, she can be viewed in uh, in a different light or at a different uh, angle uh, or at a different. Uh, slant and and the poem you know of course that uh, I did I did this reading of and offered this lens for begins with the line uh, tell the truth but uh, but tell it slant and and you know I had I had thought about uh, that that slant and that that perspective you know in a number of, of different ways um, in relationship to, uh, you know, Dickinson's uh, poetics, and um, and and in a certain sense, you know, the way that she is, you know, socially constructed uh, as a particular kind of uh, subject, and um, and some of the ways that uh, that that uh, that social construction of her subjectivity. Um, Take on characteristics of, uh, of of lens or or angle, or context through which that uh, she's viewed are, are interesting to me in particular because they relate to um, arguments you know concerning uh, cognitive differences or or, or perhaps um, the way that um, you know an individual who would um, choose if we can really use that term. <clears throat> or opt, you know, to uh, to confine herself to a kind of uh, solitary existence or or uh, reclusiveness, right? Um, the way that 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 subjectivity is defined by certain uh, authoritative discourses in in uh, in our uh, in our society and in in our culture. Um, almost un in uh, in medical terms, right? Um, and uh, that uh, that perhaps associate her with a, a kind of uh, a kind of abnormal psychology or uh, a kind of uh, rejection of certain aspects of social existence that uh, that marginalize her. And that uh, and that characterize her in ways that uh, 
can be redeemed, but aren't aren't you know necessarily obviously you know positive from from the outset. And and since I've um, I've worked you know so much uh, <laughs> and for so uh, long a time on um, on these issues of the construction of subjectivity and um, and particularly you know um, the marginalization of um, of subjects within. Uh, Within a variety of, of, of um, social domains, but those those domains certainly include aesthetic and uh, and artistic and uh, and creatively, uh, you know, economically creative and and uh, you know, economically exploitive, you know, domains of uh, of human labor and. Uh, and I've, you know, related those uh, ideas to uh, the labor of uh, of other entities as well, including uh, <laughs> including uh, the uh, the labor and industry of uh, of bees, particularly honeybees, you know, who produce uh, who produce this uh, food you know, source, and and, uh, and and these bees, you know, who. Who are female and uh, and who do this labor and produce this honey, of course, are exploited uh, by uh, <laughs> by human beings who you know keep them in captivity and uh, and uh, use them as uh, slave labor to produce this honey. And, and and you would think that you know ideas like this are are, are fairly postmodern and and wouldn't belong to uh, the domain out of which. Uh, Emily Dickinson is writing, but uh, I, I recall this, uh, not really a novel, but a romance by uh, by Hawthorne. And uh, I think it's, 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 it's called the, 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 the Blythesdale Romance, which is basically, uh, you know, his account of uh, an attempt, you know, to participate in this communal living, in this uh, transcendentalist, uh, you know, um, projective utopia that uh, that I that I believe you know actually existed as a commune in uh, in Hawthorne's time and, and and of course you know he's very critical of uh, of the uh, social living arrangements in this this commune and at, at one point he makes fun of uh, the refusal of um, you know the members of a particular I don't know, recall if it was a faction or whether it was the entirety of um, of the membership of, of this uh, the social unit, but uh, but their refusal to um, to produce honey because uh, you know they refer to it as uh, an act of enslaving and stealing from from the bees and uh, and, and so you know that idea. Uh, would have been uh, available um, in in Dickinson's time, even even though it uh, it seems anachronistic. But in any case, um, uh, Dickinson's work wasn't perhaps exploited in you know in the same manner, and uh, and her isolation and her uh, confinement perhaps you know wasn't as as, as obviously. Um, economically uh, ex exploitational or exploitive as um, as the you know the, the 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 labor you know involved in the production of um, of honey and the and the uh, and the captivity of uh, of the honeybee um, but um, but um, nevertheless you know um, later particularly you know after her death um, you know, quite, quite an, an it, you know, I, I don't necessarily um, want want all of the entailments of of, of this uh, this word that I use um, to fall upon, you know, the publication of, of her writing. But you know, the industry of of uh, publication um, certainly, you know, benefited from from her um, voluminous uh, production of 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 poetry and so in some ways we can we can metaphorize uh, Emily Dickinson as a kind of uh, a kind of uh, honeybee in isolation which is odd um, because honeybees of course you know work work uh, in, uh, in in large communities and communally you know um, like uh, you know um, 
like Hawthorne's um, communal experience and uh, uh, that he, that he uh, writes about in the Blaisdell Romance. But, um, but nevertheless, you know, it, 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 it doesn't, uh, doesn't take too much um, distortion to, to, or, or too much, uh, you know, optical reconceptualization to, uh, to imagine in a, in a strange, you know, quirky and perhaps charming sort of way that, um, that Dickinson was this, um, uh, Solitary, you know, honeybee, uh, producing the the uh, producing the product of of, of these these many uh, poems as a, As a kind of, uh, you know, we can use the word meta metaphorically, as a kind of, you know, resource uh, that uh, that you know was never consumed in in her her lifetime, but uh, certainly, you know, we we continue to uh, to consume it, you know, to this day, and uh, and and like honey, you know. Um, it, it seems to have a certain, you know, longevity and, and lastingness to it that um, that other food food sources uh, don't, right? Um, because uh, Because once the transformation is uh, is made, you know, um, via the work of, of the bees, it's uh, you know fairly stable in its uh, self preservation. That is, uh, unlike fruit, uh, it, it doesn't have uh, a limited limited shelf life or or limited. Uh, duration of uh, usefulness and um, a as a source and um, you know you know thinking about all of that and uh, and thinking about uh, this early poem of, of Dickinson's uh, to make a prairie, You know, Aaron and I, you know, began uh, a conversation uh, regarding, you know, um, the usefulness of uh, of this metaphor of, of the bee, and uh, and and what it might mean in in Emily Dickinson, and uh, and what it might mean as a kind of. Uh, symbol or, 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 or metaphor of, of, of self-portraiture and, uh, and, and who, uh, who, who might represent the bee and who might represent in this particular poem uh, the clover. And, uh, and, and this reading, and in this reading, I, I, I want to, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Aaron's poem, uh, A Prairie Rose for Emily. And, and talk about uh, some of the transformations that uh, that Aaron makes in uh, from the original poem uh, to make a prairie and, uh, and 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 why perhaps you know he makes those transformations and, and 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 what those transformations might mean in terms of what you know Aaron wants to convey and how they you know may you know shed some light on um, his understanding of of Dickinson and and what she's doing in this original poem as well as you know um, you know what you know perhaps he's responding to in in our you know contemporary 
social environment and, and the politics of today and, and, and whether, uh, you know, this moment that we exist in now, you know, has anything to do with uh, this, this particular uh, poem and, 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 and what, you know, um, some or, or, or a variety of its meanings, you know, might, might mean, might convey, rather. And um, so we'll do that, and, and I'll start, you know, briefly with, uh, uh, you know, we, we may begin, you know, line by line and, uh, and, and observe, you know, what, what the transformations are. So um, let's, let's start there, and then we can proceed into, uh, you know, larger content areas and themes, and, uh, and, and, and we, you know, we, we may uh, splinter off in a number of different directions and, uh, and treat, you know, different subjects and topics and, and uh, areas of interest, you know, as they, they engage us. So I don't have a particular program in mind, but uh, we can begin um, with this, um, you know, provisional strategy of, of, of comparing, you know, line by line uh, transformations that, that, that Aaron makes in the, the poem. All right, so, so first of all, uh, the title, uh, Dickinson's title is To Make a Prairie. And, then, and you notice that um, in Aaron's poem, um, it's not uh, to make, you know, so he shifted from uh, the idea of making or working that certainly belongs to the, the semantic domain and uh, the semantic field of, of a bee as metaphor of you know, work or bee, right? And it's important to remember that these bees are, uh, in, in terms of their uh, biological gender or biological sex, that, that they're female. And um, they're, they're not uh, reproductive females, right? They don't give birth. Only the queen does that. But uh, they, uh, they, they possess all of the, um, the characteristics that, uh, that belong to the genetics of the queen and, and are classified as uh, or sorted as, as female. And the drones... Uh, whose task is um, is sexual, and uh, whose task is 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 simply and and singularly, you know, to mate with the queen and produce uh, to produce uh, via sexual reproduction, more bees, uh, they don't participate in, in, in this labor that involves the relationship between uh, the clover or, or other source of, of pollen and, uh, and the bee, right? Um, and so... Um, when Emily Dickinson refers to uh, the task of, of, of making or working to produce a prairie, uh, she's referring to the activity of, uh, of these female you know, worker bees. And, and noting you know, that um, the sex or, or, or gendered uh, aspect of, of, the, of the bee uh, that lies within the metaphor, I, I believe is important uh, is a is a is a an important um, point in in relating uh, the relationship between the clover and the bee to to uh, Emily Dickinson you know herself as a kind of, a kind of uh, self portrait of uh, the labors of, of the poet. And um, and uh, we'll get you know into this more later. But um, her identifying um, the the totality of the prairie, right, which, whose etymology you know belongs um, to um, to this word for for meadow, right? So the totality of this uh, this uh, uh, you know life spring or 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 or, or grassland or uh, or, or, or place of, of life that is represented by prairie and meadow um, 
the claim here is made between um, you know two entities, uh, one clover and one bee, or a clover and one bee and one clover and a bee, which in fact is um, um, you know from the scientific point of view, um, uh, you know not quite right, <laughs> uh, if, you know, um, but. Um, but belongs to um, and 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 you know supports our reading of uh, of, of the strangeness of um, of Emily Dickinson as you know a bee, but a bee in in isolation from a community, uh, but a bee nonetheless that uh, just like these you know you know actual communities of of, uh, of female worker bees can in fact uh, create um, the life and the uh, the living domain right and the uh, the field and the the future you know out of out of which um, and in, in the entirety you know of a of a prairie um, can be defined and 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 um, and exist as uh, as a consequence, right, of uh, of this particular production. So, um, all of that, you know, perhaps uh, suggested in the title, and then um, and then, of course, you know, Aaron's uh, transformation here, a prairie rose. For Emily, it does it does a number of things. Um, for first. Uh, uh, it introduces the idea of, uh, of a flower uh, that doesn't belong to uh, Dickinson's poem. She refers to uh, the, 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 the flower of the, the, the clover, right? And, um, and, and, and clover and bee are two interesting words because uh, they don't really have... Uh, you know, non-trivial etymologies. The, the the etymology for the word, you know, clover and uh, and the etymology for the word, you know, bee, you know, ultimately refer back to, uh, you know, these species, the species of clover and the species of, of bee. And, um, you know, the scientific name for the word, you know, clover, which belongs to the genus uh, Trifolium, you know, refers to... Um, these three three leaves which the clover has right trifolium um, but uh, but Emily doesn't uh, choose uh, that word she chooses the word clover and uh, and, and uh, there's almost an argument here like uh, of, of uh, identity right it, it's almost an argument of uh, that uh, that this word, you know, clover, and this word, you know, bee, that uh, that lack in a certain way, you know, um, uh, etymological uh, evolution, right? That um, that they're they're uh, they're chosen because they are precisely, you know, so singular. And uh, certainly, if 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 we had introduced uh, the notion of uh, a clover being defined by the number of its leaves, and those leaves were three, um, that would complicate uh, the relationship between this one single thing and that one other single thing, which is repeated twice, and it's repeated in an interesting way in which the uh, the modifiers, right? One is uh, uh, an indefinite article modifier a, and one is a numerical um, adjectival modifier one, and uh, and both of those adjectival modifiers, you know, are used in relationship to to e each of the words, uh, but only once, right? So a clover, and then it becomes one clover, and one b, which becomes uh, a b. So it's uh, it, it's not a chiasm, but it's it's an interesting. Uh, um, um, transposition of uh, of those modifiers and 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 meaningfully as well, right? And uh, with with uh, with Aaron's title, um, what he does is um, he introduces uh, a new flower, 
uh, the prairie rose, which of course, you know, um, is a response to uh, the prairie out of which uh, the relationship and the product made by the relationship between the one clover and the one bee, you know, is formed. And, uh, and, this, uh, and this rose, I believe there's a play here in uh, in what Aaron is doing. Um, in in this case, uh, the bee and and the clover, right, make together somehow this prairie. You know, whose etymological root is meadow. And in, and in in this case, it's it's another flower, and it of course refers to uh, you know. Uh, one of the symbols for Texas, and that's probably an oblique reference to um, to the ballad form and uh, and the song, you know, the Yellow Rose of Texas, you know, which in, in a way we could associate with uh, Emily Dickinson because uh, many of her um, poems are ballads, and in fact, there's a there's a ghost of a ballad in, in this particular poem, right? I mean, you can hear it particularly in the first line. Uh, and if I sing the yellow rose of, of Texas, um, then then you'll 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 pick it up and you'll you'll uh, you'll hear it and you'll you'll see it immediately. Um, uh, to make a prairie, and then what if we put rose uh, uh, after that 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 prairie there? To make a prairie rose, it takes a clover and one bee. One clover and a bee it takes to make a reverie, and reverie alone will do if bees and rows are few. Anyway, you can hear the ghost of, uh, of the ballad form, and it doesn't take uh, much um, addition and, uh, and revision uh, to find it, but um, and then the first line in particular, which you know is much longer than the rest of the poem, you know one one feels the presence of of that specter of uh, of, of ballad, um, and uh, and Darren, you know seems seems to be aware of it, you know in more than one way. But what interests me more than that part of the revision or or uh, or rewriting of the title is. Um, is the in, in this instance, if we take uh, the rose not as a, not as a rose for Emily, um, which which clearly, obviously, also, you know, and I, I won't fail to mention it, um, refers to the uh, the William Faulkner poem, right, a rose for Emily, and in in that sense, addresses some of the issues that that we began with and the way that uh, Emily Dickinson as a uh, as a subject, right, and as as a subject uh, positioned or positionalized by uh, by literary and um, you know perhaps a, a sort of medical discourse of performativity uh, might occupy this uh, this this place of of, of a, a sort of um, isolate you know madness or um, or uh, you know the the um, the solitary uh, recluse and um, and uh, and Aaron's um, reference to the the William Faulkner short story perhaps uh, points in that direction and uh, and uh, hints at um, suggests the way that um, uh, Emily Dickinson as as subjectivity is. Uh, is socially constructed by this kind of performativity, and um, and 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 it hints that you know may, perhaps the poem will will address this, and um, and and perhaps part of the the content of the poem will address you know this this social construction. Um, that's there, but, but what interests me even more than that is the way that in in Prairie Rose, the rose, the third word in Aaron's title is is also a verb. Uh, as in, you know, to rise, uh, to stand, you know, to 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 uh, to uh, lift up, and um, and uh, as such, it's interesting because um, in in this poem, um, the the work that's done between uh, between the one B and the uh, and the one clover, or between A B and A clover, because both are, are articulated, right? 
in that uh, in that transposition of those adjectival positions, um, they make the prairie. And uh, and then and, and something else can make a prairie too, but we ha we won't get there yet. You know, if 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 bees are few, and uh, just we'll point out that uh, she doesn't mention if clover are few, but but we could we could take that either way because it's not mentioned. We could say, well, let's assume that uh, she means you know uh, clover is few as well because there is a symbiotic relationship right between the pollen and the the pollinator. But we could, you know, imagine it otherwise and, she, and say, well, she only mentioned that bees were few, but somehow clover is still there. And there are other pollinators, right? Like there are butterflies and there are other kinds of flies and there are uh, uh, d different types of coleoptera, beetles that also act as pollinators. And, um, and ants can be pollinators as well. And, uh, and there are, uh, you know, other... Uh, there are other hymenoptera, and there are other, you know, wasps uh, that uh, that pollinate as well, and uh, and uh, and so if she's referring to a specific kind of bee, either the honey bee or the bumblebee, and 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 I, you know, will make you know much of of the the honey bee, um, and perhaps it's because of the choice of clover, and clover is often associated with the production of honey. But uh, but bumblebees also you know are are uh, clover pollinators and associated with um, clover and so perhaps this prairie you know um, that's created um, uh, doesn't belong you know to that uh, domain of, uh, of of the social and in, and in, and I I've been assuming you know that uh, bee means European honeybee but if bee means bumblebee and in this poem it makes more sense as such right because there's one clover and one bee then uh, then this is interesting because this is a symbiotic relationship that uh, exists in in the uh, in the wilds of uh, America and in the landscape of America before the arrival of the, the European honeybee and um, before the arrival, you know, presumably of uh, of uh, European culture, and uh, and 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 that, uh, you know, um, that selection uh, makes it interesting. Makes it interesting work because what's being produced is is not uh, a product, right? That supports a particular market or or industry or or culture. Or, uh, or even survival of um, of a community in the way that um, you know Hawthorne's response to uh, the community in the Blythdale romance was was about economics in the same way that um, that Walden was about economics, right? And even even self-professed uh, a, a account of uh, of how this uh, survival is to be a an economic one and um and as 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 misrepresentational as Thoreau is because in fact you know um as, as I understand it at least uh you know Emerson's wife did his cooking and washed his laundry and <laughs> did most of the work but nevertheless it's 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 presented as how you know um this uh, self-made man, you know, survives in, under these, you know, conditions uh, without, you know, uh, much support from a, a community or a society of, uh, of of interlocking bees. And and if we take this bee as a bumblebee, and more and more, I'm I'm, I'm thinking that this is uh, this is the more apt metaphor for this poem, um, and that more and more, I'm thinking that uh, that Emily Dickinson was probably aware of that that uh, that it, it 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 even becomes more clearly an example of uh, of self of self portraiture here right so uh in getting back to you know Aaron's transformation a prairie rose you know for Emily um that somehow uh uh in honor of perhaps or uh or uh or to greet her or um, 
or as a, as an act of uh, autonomy of its own um, because of perhaps the labor that, that she did uh, to produce it, it also, you know, rose to her. And, and, and what that rose means and uh, in rising and, uh, and uh, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, an, an act of honoring or a greeting or, or, uh, or metaphorically perhaps, you know, ri rising to her level is, is interesting to me. And hopefully um, we'll be able to talk more about, about that, you know, given the rest of the content of the poem. All right, so let's let's go on to the the second the first line rather, and um, I've already said a lot about it. I've said that it uh, that it seems to have the ghost of uh, uh, or specter or uh, or or, or uh, a scaffolding remains of a ballad form, which which if it if that is the case, and the scaffolding of the ballad form is most clearly represented in the first line, which is the longest, of course, line of the poem, then the rest of the poem can, can perhaps be seen as, uh, as an illustration of the way that uh, Dickinson, you know, deconstructs or perforates or, um, or fragments that ballad form. And, and in that sense, you know, it becomes very interesting because the, uh, the sentences are all also, um, fragmented, right? And, uh, the uh the the particularly um this uh the central uh area here and and reverie but um but in aaron's uh in aaron's revision it's interesting because uh, he adds a lot of capitalization and uh and then um he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't change the uh, the verb make, but 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 um, but perhaps by by failing, you know, to capitalize make, he emphasizes the internal rhyme that he adds um, uh, as as a as a final rhyme. But is but the internal rhyme is there in the Dickinson, right? Make and and take and and. Um, and it's 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 slant if one if one you know takes <laughs> that uh, that s on on the end of the verb take as 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 challenging the rhyme between take and make but it's it's nevertheless an internal slant rhyme right make and take and um, and here he features it as uh, as end rhyme and perhaps also suggests you know um, that uh, in in doing so you know. Um, that um, you know recognizes that that initial line is is a bit you know too long in, in a certain way uh, at, at, at least uh, too long um, not to be relevant in its length and um, and 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 clearly right you know stands out from from the other very abbreviated lines particularly the end reverie but the rest of the lines are very very short as well. And, uh, and, and, you know, of course, you know, from, you know, from a larger perspective, um, he takes this, uh, so we have, um, an identity, right, in, in B, but let's call it a rhyme. So, uh, A, A, B, and then, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, A, 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 and then B, B, right, in the, uh, in the five line poem a a a if we take the identity b and b as a rhyme and then uh b b and um aaron uh aaron breaks that up you know significantly and in his you see, let's see, so A, B, C, B, A, uh, A, 
d d e e and then i think uh Okay, lover is a is a visual rhyme with clover. So that's uh, it's a sight rhyme, but I think that's not F, but C. And then let's see. Uh, and then we have. So that was E. So then we have F. And then I can't remember what chance was. Was chance D or E? But uh, anyway, we have that rhyme and then we have uh, F again. So let's uh, we'll see if I can do it again. So A, B, C, B, D, D, E, E, I think the F is a pawn, so F, F, and then C again, and then uh, G, and then uh, and then E or F, I can never remember whether that dance and chants are E or F, and then G again. So, um, so it's a sonnet, actually. It's just, uh, it's a sonnet that, uh, that's a, a, a bit rearranged with, uh, with the final rhyme, rhyming couplet, uh, not, not rhyming and, uh, not being final. <laughs> but it, but it's nevertheless, uh, a, a kind of sonnet. So it's interesting that uh, that Aaron transformed um, whatever you know this form is, which seems to be you know uh, what I call like a ghost ballad, like a ghost ship, which seems to be a ghost ballad into uh, into a, a, a sonnet. And I think I think Aaron's representation of sonnet form is is at least as clear as uh, as uh, Dickinson's representation of ballad form here. Uh, at least it is, you know, to my eye, and and, and the rhymes are are interesting and um, and suggest perhaps a kind of uh, I would suggest a kind of uh, I don't want to call it obsessive quality, but uh, fr frugal isn't really quite the word I, that I'm quite looking for. But 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 there's a there's an idea in in the the parsimony principle and if parsimony principle is taken as something you know positive rather than uh the negative and 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 uh not in the sense of of stinginess but of uh of uh of uh you know ec economic re resourcefulness there's a kind of economic resourcefulness in which uh when each each of the the the, the word line endings um relate uh, you know um as uh as rhyme you know you know you know back to uh, an, an an earlier one and and uh in a sense uh, nothing nothing is wasted and um and the movement um is uh is 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 you know in you know certainly not you know um extraordinarily innovative but that it's 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 surprising and uh, and curious, and and if we wanted it, we if we wanted perhaps to relate it to um, the content of the poem, we we could imagine it as as a as the movement of a bee, you know, which is also uh, apparently you know to the, uh, the the human observing eye, um, you know, somewhat happenstance and uh, and arbitrary. And 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 in Aaron's poem, it's certainly you know much more uh, happenstance and arbitrary than than it is um, 
in, in Dickinson's poem in which uh, you have the B, the B, the reverie, and the, the, the two A's, and then and you have then, you know, do and few at the end, uh, the rhyme changing to uh, switching there in, in, in the last two segments. So, in a sense, um, the the form you know that um, that that uh, Aaron elaborates here is 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 more of a dance than it is in uh, in the uh, the Dickinson poem and and you know Dickinson doesn't mention dance uh, explicitly although this this expression reverie which interestingly um, has either an archaic spelling or 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 she perhaps spells incorrectly I'm not sure how reverie was spelled in the uh, in the 19th century so I can't you know say um, I do know that um, that reverie you know does you know have an evolving uh, etymology unlike uh, the word for for uh, clover and bee and uh, and that it um, it it, uh, it relates to um, you know the uh, the French word for dream and also um, it, that etymology you know involves uh, relationships to um, you know other words you know such as rave and uh, and uh, and related to um, you know both dreaming and to dancing uh, this uh, this uh, frolic or reverie or well reverie is the word but this uh, this rage this this dance this this frolic but also this uh, daydream or um, you know being transported to this uh, uh, imaginary swirl and uh and perhaps uh you know ma imagining uh the dance of um the mystic dance right of um of the whirling you know dervishes that that transport the mind uh to this uh domain and perhaps it, you know that's the imagery that within this uh whirl and swirl and twirl and this uh, reverie of this dream that one um in fact you know creates you know what is uh, the prairie um if you know bees and and perhaps you know clover are, are few so that that idea of, uh, of of dance is represented here and then uh and then um Aaron later, you know, specifically relates it, you know, to our space-time travel co coordinates as as waggle dance and uh, and, and the whole uh, social political project that that that's a metaphor uh, for, and that is perhaps you know, and, but we haven't gotten there yet, is what uh, allows him to introduce this term revolution, which right right both plays with. The revolution of the 360 degree circle that um, is is required for us to understand even how the waggle dance becomes a communication and how one bee communicates to another bee the location of the the flower whether it be clover or prairie rose or or other other flower and um, and, and what it means in terms of the way that we use that 360 degree circle and that metaphor of the waggle dance and its displacements as, uh, as, as directionalities and instructions for the dancers in the project of uh, radical actions and, uh, and revolutions. And, and, um, and, uh, and, and that's not, yet all you know divulged in in that first line to make a prairie rose it takes what what does it take well for um for dickinson it takes a clover and one bee and then she repeats that uh and and again you know um we're reminded here you know or i, or I intend to remind us here that um uh she is perhaps, you know, referring to the bumblebee and not the European, you know, honeybee, because uh, bumblebees, you know, can be solitary. And uh, and to imagine the honeybee, even though we have this word clover and we think of uh, clover honey and, and often associate, you know, clover and, and honeybees together, but we can easily imagine it as a relationship between uh, the bumblebee and the and, 
and the clover. And, 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 and the reason that that's important, you know, in Dickinson, again, is, um, is, is constructing her and this image of her um, as a solitary figure and what that might mean in relationship to productivity and to, uh, and to source, right? And, um, and the claim here, in a certain, a certain respect, is, is, is quite radical because a, a prairie is hardly solitary. It's, a, it's an umwelt, right? And, and it's, a, it's, it's, in a sense, it's a world. It's a constellation of uh, an ecosystem of, uh, of living creatures in, in, in relationship to one another. And, uh, you know, one would think that it would take all of these, you know, various uh, social elements and engagements to create, you know, such an umwelt or, or uh, ecological system. But, but the claim, in the, in the, and it's an extraordinary one that's being made, is that it can all be made by a single clover and, and a single bee. And, um, and perhaps with this added element, reverie, or, or that is, dance and dream, right? And, uh, and then the claim, you know, further made that even the bee and the, and the clover and this is where the, the portraiture become bizarre in a certain way or, or, or odd and strange and difficult to decipher. If, if it is, in fact, a relationship between the bee and, and, and the bee is the poet and, 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 and by virtue of, uh, you know, um, uh, it, its author, you know, there, therefore uh, Dickinson, and the clover is uh, some content or, or, or some desire uh, 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 that uh, that the uh, that the author or the speaker or the uh, the maker you know has in relationship to uh, to the process of making then um, then the odd claim here is that uh, even even the maker and 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 the content or the or the object of desire or or the source or the material even the material perhaps you know the paper the page the the space, the uh, the room of one's own, the the window to look out of, the uh, the topicality, the time, the uh, the zeitgeist, wh whatever that clover represents in metaphorical terms, even that you know is unnecessary because uh, the dance and the dream are enough where uh, where makers are are, are few and uh, or or workers are few and um, and then. To become dissolved in the dance and and not even you know see oneself as this separate source or 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 or, or maker weaver or, or or pollinator you know um, separate from from the clover and the clover whether it still exists or not is is uncertain as we mentioned before but to dissolve that and 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 to imagine that the dance is all that's left and um, but where would the dance begin if um, and where where would the reverie begin as dance or as dream if uh, if there were no dreamer and if there were no but perhaps you know one dream is left the dream of the the one bee um, because bees are few, so the bee is perhaps still the dreamer, but but merely you know not dreaming of of other bees, perhaps dreaming of uh, it itself and and the clover in 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 reverie or or herself and and the clover in in reverie. Um, and uh, and Aaron Aaron leaves that large, largely the same. Um, um, what he does, though, is he reorganizes uh, the, if you want to call it, syntagm. And uh, you see in uh, Dickinson that uh, she refers to a clover and one bee, and then she re and then she reverses, right? The uh, the relationship transposes the relationships between the uh, the. Uh, the adjectival modifiers, the in the indefinite pronoun uh, a, and uh, or sorry, the uh, the indefinite article uh, a, and 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 the uh, the numerical adjective, you know, one, 
and she uh, she reverses those, but but uh, but she doesn't transpose the order of the clover and the bee. And and what you notice that Aaron did was he did the opposite. He transposed the uh, he transposed the orders of the nouns, but he did not transpose the orders of the uh, the indeterminate article and the uh, the numerical adjectives. And, and I'm not sure entirely what, you know, to make of that, other than uh, that uh, if we imagine that this is a dance and that the movement of these, uh, of these particular words, you know, are representation of a, of a bee dancing around a, a flower, whether that flower is clover, or prairie rose, or or both, uh, you know, you know, going back and forth from a clover and, and prairie rose. That uh, that Aaron's poem, if you know the Dickinson poem, right, calls attention to the fact that uh, that these words are moving around, and so um, and perhaps in that sense, the dance becomes uh, you know metacognitive of itself, or you know you could say that uh, you know attention is being drawn you know on the part you know of the reader to notice that uh, the words are are dancing you know on on the page and. Uh, in the, in the manner of a bee, right? And and bee and clover in some ways are more substantial than uh, than these uh, articles, than these indefinite articles and 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 adjectives, right? Uh, and less abstract in a certain way because they refer to the world, whereas you know the word a and the word one, the word a is is merely grammatical, and the word one refers to um, you know, abstraction by you know numerical value, and in that way um, apply you know to a greater level of uh, you know material things and abstract you know conceptual things than uh, than these you know as I'm, I'm making claim you know more representational elements b and, and clover do all right so so uh, so that's interesting and then um and then let, let's let's go on to uh Emily Dickinson's third line and reverie and we've talked you know quite a bit about you know that already the interesting thing that, that we mentioned before was that, you know, um, Aaron adds this idea of revolution, and that refers to, you know, the dance as spinning and therefore the waggle dance, but also, you know, to other kinds of revolution as well, including political and, and social revolutions. And um, and and this is, uh, this begins the, uh, what's clearly, you know, um, delineated here as a, as a second stanza. Oh, and I failed to notice that, you know, he adds these <clears throat> dashes, um, which, you know, is uh, per perhaps like a, a wink, you know, in, in to, uh, to those familiar with Emily Dickinson's work and particularly the evolution of that work and also the way that that work is, uh, is either, uh, uh, hmm, uh, you know the 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 original you know materiality and representation of that work, whether it's respected or whether it's rejected and abandoned by publishers and replaced by more uh, conventional uh, conventional organizations of uh, of syntax and punctuation, right? And so uh, this is perhaps you know a nod uh, to those familiar with those dashes. But interestingly, like each. Each of these, uh, you know, um, if you could refer to them as sentences, does end with a period. So, so that's interesting too. Um, I'm not sure what entirely to make of that, but um, but then you so those dashes, and then we have a dash in every. Well, we have we have a dash in every stanza, but um, but the final couplet, which is interesting, which is also you know. Uh, a displacement, right? And, and and perhaps you know it's 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 displaced from being final. Perhaps that's a pun on on the uh, the word displacement and the way that the waggle dance is a form of linguistic displacement. I'm not I'm not certain, but it, it may be. All right, so uh, revolution and reverie and uh, and, and those are almost. Uh, uh, identities here in a certain way, um, and that and uh, could easily have become a comma, right? And and uh, 
uh, or, or perhaps not. You know, if, if revolution and reverie are, are different things, then, then we have to consider how the spinning and how the uh, the transformation of a social condition is, is separate from the, the imagining, the dreaming, and the dancing, uh, and the uh, and the wildness uh, of the reverie, right? Uh, which wakes, uh, okay, there's none of that, you know, going on in, uh, in Dickinson. So in a way, he's being more explanatory and explicit, which wakes, and I, and I suppose that, you know, has something to do with, you know, being woken up, you know, either as a visionary or as a social political subject into one's own identity and self-understanding. Shakes, you know, which is, you know, interesting in terms of, you know, shakes and quakes, you can hardly fail to notice the relationship between, you know, shakers and quakers, particularly as it refers to this Dickinson poem and, and, and what would have been, you know, these interesting uh, receptions of, of the spirit, right, that uh, manifest themselves in the form of um, shaking and quaking uh, that, you know, that relate to, um, you know, uh, an aspect of uh, Dickinson's world that, that we, you know, might forget, you know, uh, in our time. And, and this kind of dance that, that was allowed in, in these uh, religious communities when other kinds of uh, representations and, 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 and cultural manifestations were, were forbidden or, 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 or um, you know, certainly um, frowned upon, right? Which wakes, shakes, you know, and there's an interesting one, breaks, you know, so what revolution breaks is interesting. So it's not merely a dance, but also a breaking. And uh, none of that, that break, which is also an, an internal rhyme, right? All of these are internal rhyme. Wake, shakes, breaks, and quakes. So Dickinson focuses on the making and the taking, right? And, and in this case, taking isn't, you know, to steal or to take away, but what it requires. So making requires, like, like there's a relationship between the, the creation, the building, and the resources that are required to do the building. And here, you know, we have that same in, internal rhyme, making and taking. So you have a, a making, a creating, and, um, and then you have a, a resources. But then you have all of these other uh, suggestions as well that um you know beyond that there's a awakening and a kind of enlightenment perhaps or 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 uh, the waking is so interesting because the reverie if it's a daydream or a dream is 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 um antithetical to the idea of waking but the perhaps the waking belongs to the revolution and the spinning as well as um as the the reverie belongs to uh the uh, the confusion and the frenzy right shakes and and breaks and and quakes and it's not too hard to understand how the the verb breaks relates to this noun revolution which you know clearly breaks with tradition cultural values and uh, the anti an, an, antiquated uh, you know epistemological structures meta metaphysics uh, presumptions of, of of the of the past right. All right. Okay, and then, uh, and then there's this weird. Okay, and I, I don't even really need to go to the Dickinson to note this, but uh, there's this this weird uh, invocation of, of Shakespeare, and uh, and from Hamlet's uh, soliloquy here. So to dream, right, per chance, but then, but then he broke up the word per chance. And, and, and that follows right after this word, you know, breaking and quaking, like as if, you know, an earthquake came through and, 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 uh, and both introduced Shakespeare and, and broke it up, right? And then that chance, of course, is there, you know, to, uh, to relate to um, this, this, this fundamental word that, um, that Aaron adds, that perhaps is uh, in, intuitely there in the, uh, in, in Dickinson's reverie, but that it is really foregrounded here in the relationship to the bee. Aaron chooses honeybees because it's not, um, bumblebees don't do waggle dances. He, he, 
however he read the relationship that um, is established between the clover and the one bee, whether it was a honey bee and, and, and Emily Dickinson had, done, had misread uh, the singularity of that bee, or whether it was a bumblebee, however he read it, whether he understood that, that Dickinson was referring to a bumblebee or not, uh, he's he's clearly chosen uh, European honeybees here because they they are the bees that do the the waggle dance right and um, and that's interesting because it's a it's a claim about community and uh, and and the the social nature of this dance and it, it's a claim that uh, no you need you need lots of organized uh, communities of bees. Um, um, but again, you know, but maybe you don't because uh, he, he still says reverie alone will do if you don't have them, right? And even revolutions are few. So the, the claim, though, when, when, when you switch, when you switch from uh, bumblebee to, uh, to, to honeybee and, 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 and add this, this aspect of the waggle dance, one of the interesting things I think that happens is um, the way that Aaron turns it, at least, is uh, you, you will something the reverie will do, but clearly, like the product will be different, right? Because he he relates it both to uh, to the metaphor, as in bees in the waggle dance, and to the more explicit referent of uh, revolutions and, and and revolutionaries, and. Um, Perhaps you know, meaning that uh, you know we'll, we'll survive no matter what, you know, whether we can change the society or not, uh, and and that rever reverie will be our our domain, and and the reverie, you know, perhaps you know, the dance and the and the daydream, but uh, and, and perhaps there are more meanings than than that that w that we'll get to. But let's go let's go back up to where to where we we left off. All right, so to dream perchance to rave all right so what what's the what's the shakespeare what is what does hamlet say he says to dream perchance to sleep all right and therefore you know to go to back to sleep and presumably you know that means something other than being wakeful and dancing but here to dream perhaps to rave right so that draws it into this other sense of dream like uh more like uh, the dream that um is described by uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., right? And um, and and his dream uh, to change the uh, the social conditions and 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 uh, the status quo of uh, of our our social inscription within um, economies and uh, and orders of. Uh, uh, oppression and uh, and uh, social hierarchy right and um, so 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 the dream becomes a bit different it is not the dream of going to sleep and getting away from one's troubles as it is in uh, in in Shakespeare's Hamlet um, but rather uh, to dream of, of a, a future to dream of a dance to dream of a reverie, and, and to rave and perhaps rage, you know, and then and then interesting a repetition that doesn't belong to the Shakespeare, to dream per chance, and then whatever that splitting of chance. Chance is interesting because it, it belongs to this whole discourse and 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 binary opposition between intentionality versus chance, and that's of course something that's fascinating to Aaron, and that he plays with all the time. So per chance. Um, how would this become an accident? How would the dream of the future, the visionary's dream, be um, as it is um, via, you know, chance as opposed to, uh, you know, um, pattern and uh, intentional organization? So that, that's interesting in and of itself. Per chance to rave and then uh, to glance, right? Okay, so that's, you know, to look or, or, or something that... Uh, shines upon and then he says perhaps as light upon okay so to so glance as in you know um glancing upon you know the water or just glistening there and that, that's an interesting way of 
formulating it, glistening, and then he adds the singing. So it's it's shining and it's singing. So it's singing is shining. That neologism fascinates me there. Uh, so this dew, right, perhaps on a flower petal, you know, at breaking dawn, you know, glistening under the sun and singing, right, singing the song of this, uh, maybe it's on a flower petal or maybe it's on something else. But this glistening dew that is singing at the breaking of dawn and then that, that breaking comes back up here to that word. Uh, or furtively. So he's looking at two different meanings of this word glance, right? Glance, Glancing off the water or glancing off the dew, this light, but also a glancing at a lover, which is presumably a reference to uh, the symbolic significance of this relationship between the bee and the clover, right? Because, uh, because all flowers are... are uh, Are sexual organs of uh, of these these flowering plants, right? They're the they're the sexual organ of uh, of the flower. So they're not only uh, merely you know symbols of sexuality, but they are in fact sexual organs. And so the relationship that the that the bee has, whether bumble or or honey, uh, to uh, to the clover, it is hard, you know, to ignore or dismiss as uh, as something other than than sexual. It can certainly be something more than sexual, but it's hard to uh, to take that that out of the equation, right? And 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 so when we say here, or when Dickinson says that uh, when this when this uh, relationship, you know, which is sexual, right, is limited. She doesn't say that it's entirely absent, but she says if bees are few. So if bees are few, these kinds of relationships, which you know one can't ignore as being sexualized, um, you know, um, can be limited, right, by the number by the number of of one participant in 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 the relationship. But um, but she she adds that will persist, you know, where reverie, whatever that word reverie means, and we've been looking at it as, uh, as, as dance and transport and, and daydream and, and, uh, and, and exuberance and enthusiasm and twirl and, and whirl, whirlpool in a sense. Um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and transport in the sense of ecstasis, you know, being transported to a different domain of, of consciousness. So ex, I like reverie as ecstasis, right? And reverie alone will do, ecstasis will do, if, uh, if, 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 if partners, you know, perhaps in this relationship are, are, are few. And, um, and, and that, you know, is, is perhaps what's uh, going on here. And I, I'm wondering, um, you know, secretly, um, furtively, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, both the furtive glance, right, which is a, a idiomatic expression that we have in common to the language, but perhaps relates to um, the furtive message in, uh, in, in the Dickinson poem in an interesting way. So this singing do at breaking dawn or furtively, you know, glancing at a lover and reverie alone will do. If bees and waggle dance, a lot going on there. Bees and waggle dance. So the ability to communicate, you know, where the dan where the resources are located, right? So waggle dancing for for the honeybee means um, it, it, it's an instruction instruction for the other bees to locate uh, th this resource of these of these flowers and. Uh, and, and the pollen that they provide in the production of honey and, and the economy of, of bees. So if bees in waggle dance are few, for whatever reason, you know, they can't do their dance, they can't communicate, you know, maybe they're, uh, maybe some of the books in their, in their libraries are banned or, or, or they're not allowed to speak or they're censored. <laughs> Metaphorically, it could relate to any of those ideas, right? And um, whether or, or revolutionaries, individuals, you know, willing to do the work. So revolutionaries, in this sense, is that willing to uh, negotiate the uh, three hundred de 
360 degree circle, you know, understand the message, you know, uh, okay, revolutionaries, meaning uh, the bees that do the waggle, waggle dance, right? Because they, uh, they go around in circles and, and, and tell others where, um, where these resources are located. And uh, so, so you, if you can't find these, um, what's the reverie? Uh, you know, is it, is it, is it simply the swarm of bees? Uh, is it, uh, is it simply the um, the communication of you know endorphic uh, the endorphic uh, pleasures of, of the dance uh, or is it um, is it you know the suggestion I think from a meta poetic expression is wh whether the, these dance whether these bees are there to do the dance or get the dance or, or or find the resources or not there's a certain pleasure in um, in the creation uh, of the work itself, and 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 uh, whatever the dance might be, whether it's waggle or, or otherwise, and uh, and perhaps it's just that you know flitting from uh, from one position you know to to the next as be that uh, and the and the imagining of it that um, that even if uh, even if the revolution you know you know cannot persist. Um, offers, you know, a, a place, you know, to dream, perchance to rave, to glance perhaps as light upon, you know, a future of glistening dew at breaking dawn, and, um, and, and the fertility uh, of, of the glance upon uh, a, a, the lover. And, um, and, and I, and I guess, you know, that's, that's the, uh, that ultimately is it. Mm, however, it's changed in in uh, in Aaron's version. Um, makes it very like you know, uh, you know Dickinson's poem. And the other day, I had noted you know that uh, you know incorrectly, obviously, that uh, there isn't a lot of social content in. Uh, in, in Emily Dickinson's uh, poetry, and 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 that's true in, in in this one sense. There's not a lot of overt social political content in Emily Dickinson's poetry, right? In in the same manner in which we can find overt uh, political content in this poem of uh, of Aaron's, particularly in these two words, revolution and uh, revolutionary. But in some other words too, you know, um, if we draw them out a, a bit, and uh, and here um, the uh, the social political content, you know, is 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 entirely and uh, and exclusively, you know, covert, right, and uh, belongs to um, to the realm of of, of, of the hidden and. Um, if uh, if the waggle dance, you know, is is belongs to the uh, is, linguistic isn't the right word, but the communicative understanding of, of the honeybee, uh, somewhat exclu exclusively, the dance that the bee and the clover perform, if this bee is a, a bumblebee, is is even more. Uh, an idioglossia and, uh, and 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 almost not a communication at all because it exists just in this unique relationship between the two entities who who have apparently you know developed their own language in in uh, in the reverie that that remains um, you know obscure. You know, not only you know to uh, human consciousness, but uh, to to perhaps other bumblebees and 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 and, and other clover, and uh, and and that I think is all is is somewhat challenged in uh, in Aaron's revisions in which uh, you know making the dance a reference to the waggle dance. And, and perhaps you know to to our construction of waggle dance as space time uh, communication coordinate system um, allows 
that notion of uh, revolutionaries being few it still remain open as revolutionaries, you know, being you know possible. A prairie rose for Emily to make a prairie rose. It takes a clover and one bee, a bee and one clover, revolution and reverie, which wakes, shakes, breaks, and quakes, to dream, her chance to rave, to glance, perhaps as light upon, glistening dew, at breaking dawn, or furtively at lover, and reverie alone will do. If bees and waggle dance, and the revolutionaries are few.